many, many millions of people are living in their Outlook inbox each day, relying on their never-ending collection of emails to serve as a to-do list directing what they should be working on next. The problem with this approach is that a collection of emails arranged like this, or even if saved within a categorised subfolder system, doesn't actually give you any sense of order or priority so that you can plan and carry out the work that those emails are telling you to do. It's just a big jumbled up pile that keeps on coming at you. So a better approach is to treat your Outlook inbox like you would your paper in tray and move over to a daily planner method of recording the work that you need to do and how you're going to spend your time. In a sense, it's just like a file of facts for email. In order to move away from an inbox focus to a more rational way of understanding the work that you have to do each day, indeed each week, each month, um, it's advisable to adopt the daily planner scenario or the daily planning model. This notion suggests that you should have both your calendar and your list of tasks aligned side by side. Here's your calendar and here's your tasks. And the primary view should be on your daily um, calendar and task pad because ultimately it's what you do each day that determines whether you fail or succeed in the end. And when you drill down on each day you discover that you've got two types of work. You've got work that's fixed in time, that's reflected in your calendar. This is telling you that you need to be in a particular place at a particular time, doing particular things with particular people. And when you're not doing your work that's fixed in time, you're doing your flexible work or your variable work. And your flexed or variable work is typically broken down into three types of tasks. And this is the work activity that you do between the gaps of your meetings and your appointments. And drilling down on your tasks for the day, you discover you've got fundamentally three types of tasks. You've got work that must be completed today, which is detailed as a high priority task. You've got work that you hope, expect, or complete, or have previously scheduled to complete uh, today, or it's daily routine work, the type of work that you do every single day. This is detailed as normal priority, and it's in the middle of your list of tasks, suggesting that it's the second type of work that you turn your attention to after you've dealt with your high priority activities. And then finally, you have at the bottom of your list of tasks, your low priority work. This is work that you don't need to action today, but it's the type of thing that you're just keeping your eye on, waiting for some contingent action to be satisfied. And in this regard, it's uh, detailed as low priority. So it appears, as I say, at the bottom of your task pad. Now, the magic and the trick in being able to work effectively with your daily calendar and your, daily and your task pad is to have this set up inside Outlook so that as you move from day to day you can see that your work that's scheduled for each day on your daily planner moves with you as well and so in this way it becomes completely possible to understand exactly how you should be spending your time each day leaving your inbox to the role of being the gateway to your working life, allowing you to uh, process emails there, identify the type of work that's involved, when you're going to do it, and then take that work out of your inbox and reflect it in your calendar and your taskpad. Now that we've looked at the concept of the daily planner being reflected in a list of tasks aligned side by side with your calendar for the day, Let's um, go and check out how we can set this up for us in Outlook 2003. 2007 is a different kettle of fish, I have to say, but I'll, refer I'll return to that a little bit later. So to set it up for Outlook 2003, you come to View. You make sure that the taskpad is switched on and then ensure that the taskpad view is set with these two particular settings. Active task, selected days and include tasks with no due dates. This then ensures that the um, tasks that we want to have shown on our taskpad are reflected as we move from day to day, being our scheduled and active work and the work that we're just going to um, be reminded of that we need to do each day, or we're just keeping our eye on down uh, at the low priority end of our list of tasks. So that's the uh, essential setting for the taskpad view. And now we need to make sure that the items on the taskpad are set up and in order to do this we just right mouse click here 
and then come to customize current view and make sure that we have the settings set in this particular way I will uh, just let you take that in for a moment perhaps you may want to screenshot this or make a note or of course you could revisit the movie again at any time and check but these are the settings that we're looking for it's very simple to do this we just click here and choose the particular fields that we want showing here in here so icon complete subject on the other hand if you were working in a uh, work group situation where you're delegating work to each other, delegating tasks, you may want to add owner as well. But uh, these are the four uh, features that you want to have included in uh, the fields. So you click that and you'll see that that's now been updated. And then group by and just click to show priority. Then by none. So these are the settings along with descending the subject again descending the filter that will be set up automatically by Outlook there's no need to change this and then if you wish to change these then you may go ahead but uh, uh, nothing turns on these settings for the purposes of making your taskpad work for you and in this regard once you have your taskpad set up in this fashion you'll see that all of your work will simply follow you from day to day like this whilst Outlook 2003 gives you the ability to set up your calendar and your taskpad side by side unfortunately Microsoft when they developed Outlook 2007 they could have or could be said to have taken a step backwards unfortunately because um, the taskpad setup capability that we have in 2003 simply isn't mirrored in 2007 and there doesn't seem to be any practical way to be able to achieve a daily planner effect uh, that we can achieve in 2003 with 2007 um, there is the possibility to um, include your list of tasks on the bottom of your calendar each day the problem there is that it's going to show you all the tasks that you have not just the the task for the day and it doesn't give you the ability to um, uh, organize them by high normal and low priority and then there is the um, to-do bar which Microsoft introduced which um, is reflected here and again the problem with the to-do bar is that uh, it doesn't give you the ability to organize them by priority and it doesn't give you the ability to know um, uh, which tasks you should be doing on which day so unfortunately um, the 2007 version of Outlook from a, a daily planner and a workload organizing perspective is a, a step back so um, here's the plug naturally enough when we developed Orla for 2007 we anticipated this problem and and so we've developed our own taskpad which I'll demonstrate for you now so here we have the taskpad for Orla that's um, set up so that all of your tasks are arranged by high priority must complete today a normal priority daily routine and scheduled work and a watch list and as you can see as you move from day to day those tasks follow you in exactly the same way as they do now with 2003 so in actual fact when you run um, Orla for 2007 we don't need to have this daily task list turned on so we turn it off at the bottom so that in effect using Orla you're able to achieve the same effect as you do in 2003 as a result of the software that we've um, brought into play